investigations. Kawasaki disease is a vasculitis. So, all the acute phase reactants will be elevated. You will find elevation of ESR. You will find elevation of CRP. You will find elevation of neutrophils. So, there will be neutrophilia in the peripheral blood. Remember that CRP is a sensitive marker to monitor disease activity. So, when you give IVIG and the patient responds to the therapy, the CRP levels tend to fall rapidly. So other than this, these patients, the, if you look at the platelet count, the platelet count in Kawasaki disease is either normal or elevated. Elevation produces massive thrombocytosis with levels reaching as high up to 10 lakhs per millimeter cube. The elevation in platelet count usually begins in the subacute phase that is beyond second week of illness and it tends to normalize in around 6 weeks. It is an acute phase reactant which is elevated. Potential MCQ. Thrombocytopenia is not seen in Kawasaki disease normally. However, if occurs, if it does occur, it indicates increased risk of coronary artery aneurysms and resistance to therapy. So, fall in the platelet count is a bad thing to happen. So, this is a useful point that you should remember. And in investigations, also remember that echocardiography is mandatory. Why it is mandatory? Because most of the complications in Kawasaki disease are cardiac complications. How frequently should one repeat ECO in a child with Kawasaki disease? To avoid any ambiguity, any alternate thing or wrong information to be disseminated, I have taken the snapshot taken from IAP position paper of Kawasaki disease 2020. It says that in echocardiography, first ECO should be performed at the time of diagnosis. In uncomplicated patients, it should be repeated at 1 to 2 weeks after diagnosis and also 4 to 6 weeks after the therapy has been started. This is because dilatation is unusual beyond 6 weeks. If there are normal coronary arteries, they can be discharged from cardiology care after 12 months. It does not mean the patient is admitted in hospital for 12, uh, 12 months. It means the patient does not require any further cardiology follow-up after 1 year. If there is echocardiography is normal, maximum you can follow up the patient in cardiology unit for one year. And after that, the patient need not go to the cardiovascular department further. However, the medical records should permanently mention that the patient had been a patient of Kawasaki disease. For patients who have coronary abnormalities, the echocardiography should be done at least twice per week till the luminal dimension stabilize and we should look for thrombus. After that, it should be done at 2 weeks, then 4 to 6 weeks, then at 3 months and then every 6 to 12 months till the echocardiographic parameters normalize. So, this all uh, therapy you need to understand and make it a part of your working memory. In the practice questions, you will get questions related to clinical scenarios on performing echocardiography in Kawasaki disease. But because it is a controversial, complicated thing. So, to avoid any ambiguity, I have given the exact snapshot that you are supposed to cram up. Moving over, one to do eco in cardiography, the photograph which I had shown, that is the one to be remembered. So, diagnosis, in, in case somebody asks you the summary of when to do echocardiography in Kawasaki disease, the summary is very simple. Diagnosis, one to two weeks, six weeks, and then one year, and then the patient can be taken away. This is the brief summary which we practically follow. But for entrance exam, you are supposed to follow the one which has been given to you in IAP Pediatrics uh, position paper.